Hey, I'm back for another Q&A. So last time I, I mentioned that I would do the next Q&A session on coding questions in particular. So that's what I'll focus on here. Um, let's just jump right to it. So um, first question, what do you mean by sophisticated problem not made trivial by foundational knowledge? Um, so for a bit of background, this was part of a, this had to do with a, a post that I made on and how to get yourself into a full-time software job during your dur during college, and so I, I I made a little roadmap for that. Um, and the first two steps were: step one is learn a bunch of skills ahead of time, and then step two is demonstrate those skills on interesting projects. And in particular, I mentioned that the problems that you work on should be sophisticated, not stuff that's made trivial by foundational knowledge. So, so what does that mean? What does it mean for, for a type of problem to be sophisticated and not made trivial by foundational knowledge? Basically, what I'm saying here is, is that you, you don't want to spend a ton of time putting together some kind of like some hacky solution to a, a problem that could be solved using basic algebra or basic calculus. So what's, what's not impressive would be if you spend like a, a month um, essentially doing, finding the area under a curve, except you don't know calculus, you don't know Riemann sums, and you come up with this janky method that sort of works in your use case. And then you, you, you tell somebody about it and about like how you, you, you came up with, with this complicated method and here's its shortcomings, here's how you resolve some of the shortcomings. And then they just ask you, well, why don't you just use Riemann sums? I mean, anyone who, who took basic calculus knows what a Riemann sum is. Or the same thing for solving a system of linear equations. Maybe you came up with some kind of personally interesting way of, of doing it, but it but it turns out that like if you just knew some basic linear algebra, that this would be like trivial. You just dump it in a matrix, row reduce the matrix, and and bam, now you know whether there is a solution, whether it's unique, whether there's uh, infinitely many solutions, what they are. Like it's it's just it's easy if you if you know your basic linear algebra. Basically, it's it's not impressive to solve an easy problem in a complicated way. What's impressive is to solve a problem that's that's actually hard. And and when you're explaining it to somebody, they don't know already how to solve the problem. Or maybe they think they do, but then you mention some kind of edge cases that they're not thinking about. And then they're like, oh, okay, that's this is actually a very hard problem to solve. I'm not sure how I do it. And then you tell them how you did it, and then they're like, wow, that was a good idea. That's that's the effect that you're going for. You're, you're, you want to stay away from reinventing a worse wheel. Because think about what kind of impression that makes. If you If you show off reinventing a worse wheel, basically taking an easy problem that could be resolved really quickly and elegantly if you just had your foundational knowledge in place. And then you come up with some personal solution that is just worse. It's more complicated. It took you a long time to put together. And maybe it doesn't solve the problem as well. What impression that gives is that you're somebody who gets satisfaction out of creating problems that don't need to be there. And that is not the impression that you want to make on a potential employer. You don't want to come across as somebody who 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 creates these, these issues. You wanna come across as somebody who, who just drills into the, the core of, of, a, of a real problem, um, finds all, all, all the things that can be solved easily, and then just like solves them easily using foundational skills, just gets those out of the way, drills into the either, either and then you either fully solve the problem or you, you, you hit this, this type of, this, this core of the problem that, that can't be solved easily using using well-known foundational knowledge and skills. And then that's where you, you start bringing some of your kind of original intellect and, and problem solving skills to just chip away at it. And, and that's, that's what you wanna communicate that you're able to do. That when there are legitimately hard problems that you're able to make progress in destroying them. So it's really two parts. Part one is like, you wanna show that you can get all the easy parts of the problem out of the way. They're not a distraction to you. You, you just, you, you obliterate them quickly, elegantly with your foundational knowledge. You don't get bogged down in them. And you hit this, this rock solid core of legitimately hard problem. And then you're able to grapple with that and make progress. It's a sophisticated 
problem. It's not made trivial by your foundational knowledge or your potential employer's foundational knowledge. It's something that everyone who looks at it can can point and say like, wow, yeah, that's a challenging problem. I'm not sure exactly. It's not obvious how to go about solving it. And that's when you can say how you went about solving it. And that's when you can impress with your solution to it. All right, moving on to the next question. So next question, I would love it if you would sketch out more of your ideas on how to learn coding. Fred, your FAQ on your website, but as a non-coder, it's still mystifying to me where coding sits properly in the educational sequence. Should it be started as young as possible after multivariate calculus? I don't understand how it works together with other subjects. Um, so, all right, so I, I taught a coding sequence. That this this is a response to, to a to a poster i was kind of talking about this um these coding courses that i developed and, and taught to students in math academy's original in school program in, in pasadena and basically they learn high school math in middle school and university math in high school so in eighth grade they they would pass the ap calc bc exam in the ninth grade they get a, a ton of linear algebra and multivariable calc under their belt some differential equations and probability and statistics too and then in 10th grade, they could join the, the lowest course in my coding sequence, which would leverage all of that background math and, and pull it together into doing some serious quantitative computer science, scaffolding up all the way through basic data structures and algorithms, and then building a machine learning library from scratch. I mean, like not even using NumPy or some linear algebra library, but, but actually building a matrix class, building determinant and inverse and row reduction and matrix multiplication methods within that class, and then using those matrices to fit linear regressions, and then also building like decision trees and logistic regressions, neural nets, implementing backprop by hand, not just offloading it to, to some other uh, off the shelf library that, that does all the hard work. No, they would have to do all this by hand. They have to code this up themselves. And eventually they got into reproducing research papers and machine learning and AI. Um, in particular, the, the research pro papers in the in the Blondie 24 research program, which was in the 90s. And it was kind of centered around evolving neural nets to, to play games, like starting out with tic-tac-toe, but then moving on to more advanced games like, like checkers. So back to the question. So personally, I started these students on, on coding after multivariable calculus and linear algebra. And that was kind of necessary in order to for instance, build a machine learning library from scratch, implementing um, the, the matrix class from scratch, like determinant, inverse, row reduction, and implementing back propagation and neural nets from scratch, which requires using the multivariable chain rule. But I don't think that coding has to be postponed until there. I just think it, it's, it's just this particular quantit like very heavily quantitative computer science building a machine learning library from scratch reproducing uh research papers in machine learning and ai you need some heavy math chops in order to to even get your arms around those things but there's plenty of coding that you can do aside from that before you've learned all the math like sorting algorithms and hash tables and breadth first and depth first search some of the more basic data structures and, and algorithms you, you, you don't really need a whole lot of advanced math to do that and things related to front-end design like designing a, a game board with the the game cells having the right um, margins and being ar arranged in a like a, a hexagon board there's plenty of interesting projects you can do without knowing university level math um, just some some basic algebra and for instance, one category of those projects would be re-implementing board games, making a, a class for every piece on the board that has its own properties, making a class for each player, and then an overarching game class that, that asks the players to, to make their moves and the players make the moves, tell the game what to do, and then the, 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 the game arranges its internal state. Like, this kind of hits on, on on more of the software engineering, object-oriented programming, elegantly dealing with complexity, dipping your toe into managing a, a code base that's larger than, say, just a, a elite code problem. And that can all be started um, earlier, well before you know your university-level math. I think all you really need for that is arithmetic and basic algebra knowledge. 
So you could probably do this with a, a bright middle schooler. You know, I actually got a, a question a while ago uh, from a parent who was asking about, in general, like recommendations on how to teach kids to code. And I, I wrote up a little um, response to that. And my recommendation was to start with the simplest version of the real thing. So like something like Python or, or Node uh, as opposed to say Scratch. Like start with a language that it's it's easy, um, but the low level details like manage, memory management are abstracted away and it reads almost like plain English, but it's actually used by professional programmers. And it's like the minimum viable version of the real thing. You know, I, I, I think like leaning on something like something that tries to be more scaffolded for novices, but but is not the real thing. Kind of like the same situation when when you're teaching a a kid arithmetic. It's like, okay, well, you can use manipulatives like counting blocks. Those might be helpful at the beginning if the kid is really struggling to wrap their head around the idea of like numbers and addition. But you 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 want to wean yourself off the counting blocks as, as quickly as possible. You don't want to stay in counting block world and and just get so used to using these manipulatives that that don't generalize well in terms of efficiency like you don't want to let a kid stay in finger counting land for too long because otherwise they're just going to get trapped there and become comfortable with finger counting for everything and it's going to turn from a scaffold into a crutch and i think it's the same way with programming you want to keep things simple but at the same time using tools that are fine to continue using into the future. And if you're using a, a real programming language like Python or Node, then you can also use a, a real environment like VS Code or some kind of emulator and use a real debugger. Now, in terms of curriculum, what I recommended was to just start off with some intro course that covers the very basics of coding. Um, I saw a Python course on Code Academy that's free and that covers the very, very basics. And I think after that, you can jump right into building progressively more complicated board games from scratch. Maybe start with tic-tac-toe, then maybe connect four, then checkers. It doesn't require a whole lot of math knowledge, but it it kind of forces you to get good at these software development principles. Wrangling the complexity, getting your class structures right, debugging a system. Now to keep the focus on building the core functionality of the game and, and doing it from scratch. And I'd always be wary about getting lost in in side quests and just keep the focus keep keep the focus on moving the needle in terms of actual coding ability. Just focus on building the board game from scratch, printing out the board into the terminal. Because if you open up the door to all sorts of colors and fonts and other design settings, then yeah, kids are prone to go totally overboard spending all their time messing around with the design when they should just be working on the things that actually level up their coding skills. And and when they go overboard on the design, it often doesn't even turn out good. It's just like some some monstrosity of yellow text and a purple background, put all these invisible buttons in there, fart sound triggers just for laughs. If you keep things limited to the terminal, then that, that kind of removes all, all those distractions. And it's important to scaffold the games up. Like start with a simple game. Don't go after the most complicated game off the bat. Don't start with trying to build your own World of Warcraft, because what will happen is, is the kid is just going to bite off more than they can chew, going to spend a bunch of time not getting anywhere, and it's just going to be frustrating and very little learning is going to happen. So you, you want to start with simple games, but just progressively ramp them up in, in complexity, but, but never too big a step in complexity. Now, I should also say this, this, this all, all, all this recommendation assumes that you actually know how to code and can kind of coach the your your kid through this process of building these board games if, if you don't know how to code and you're just looking for some kind of online course to offload all this work of of, of teaching the kid through this process of, of building out these board games then i don't know i haven't really seen anything like that that works as effectively as as i would hope online I mean, there's are very, very, very basic coding courses, but but beyond that, the, the level of scaffolding, I think, just typically isn't what it needs to be to to keep kids on the rails. And that's something that we're working on um, at Math Academy. Or after we release this upcoming machine learning course, where we're going to be looking at a, a, a an intro to coding course that is really highly scaffolded 
goes beyond just the basic like what is an if statement what is a, a while loop what is a variable but actually kind of gives gives students practice in combining all these coding constructs and in progressively more complicated ways and kind of smooths out that transition into doing some some bigger projects but that's in the future and so for now if, if if you if you don't know how to code and and you want your kid to learn coding beyond just a simple intro to python what's a variable like i i i don't know that there there is currently a, a, another way other other than having a, a, an actual tutor or somebody who who knows how to code work with them and, and coach them through these more advanced skills and and, and projects all right, next question. So this next question was, um, I was talking about how it's worth uh, learning serious SQL during school, during university, and not just the simplest query, but like actually like writing and organizing and debugging just very large, complicated queries. And so the question is, how do you actually do that? And there's another question that's similar. Um, so I actually learned this stuff on the job. And so the other question is, how do you learn SQL after landing a job, any courses or whatever? And so honestly, I've, I've not seen any amazing SQL courses that that expose you to these, like the, the, these big ass complicated queries. Though I haven't been looking lately and it's it's been years since I've really taken a, a proper look so maybe if, if if anyone knows of of a good course out there, feel free to leave a comment. Let me know. Let everyone else know. But personally, my my SQL learning just came from taking on bigger and bigger projects and making the transition from doing one off pieces of work to just building and owning a a subsystem that had to expand in capability as our product got more and more complicated. And that kind of had a scaffolding effect in that when I first started working on our task selection model, um, the the queries were a lot simpler because they just they they could be simpler because I was building a, a V1 of it. The system as a whole wasn't as complicated. And it's just gradually over time they had to be refined and pulling in more data, having heavier logic within them as we kept on layering more capabilities onto the product. All right, I'm getting kind of tired. It's getting around that time where I got to wrap it up for today. I didn't get through all the coding questions that I was hoping to. Only got about halfway there. That's all right. I'll just save the rest for another Q&A session in the future. Signing off. Till next time.